Okay, so here we've got our player character. Who we can see we can strafe left and right, but we've got a fixed camera that's attached to them. So let's go and sort this out using Cinemachine and the new input system. So as we can see, I've got my level, I've got a player object, it's got my little script on here. I've got a main camera, but note there's no camera actually attached to this object. And I've got my three things I'm going to use. The level, the player object, and the, and the script. So we can strafe. I'm also going to need to use Cine Machine. I've already got it installed, but if you need to, go into the package manager, switch to Unity Registry, and search for Cine Machine. You will also need the input system, which I've already got enabled. And I've got my player input and a character controller and my basic Cine Machine script on there. So what we're going to first do is let's go and add a free look camera to our scene. And we can see it's added the Cine Machine brain onto this default camera. So it's sort of taking over this. We don't need to worry too much about that. I've got my Cine Machine free look. And we're going to just hit run and see what happens. And everything becomes a mess. It's giving us some errors. So what we're going to do, it tells us it wants the input class because it's trying to use the old input system. So we're going to go and add a component and we're going to add an input provider. So search for Cine Machine Input Provider, add that on and we need to choose the input action references. So the easiest way I'm going to go and grab that is I'm just going to go and double click on my default input action so that it appears over here. On my Cine Machine free look, I just want the X, Y axis, take my player look values. Let's go and test that again. And we've still got nothing. And we've got a huge number of warning messages. Orbital transposer requires a follow target. We haven't told what camera this should be following or what object this camera should be following. So I'm just going to take the player object and drag it into the follow. So it's going to be stuck behind it in one location. And when the player moves, the camera moves with it. But not the greatest. We also want it to look at the player. Don't worry if it doesn't look quite right here. So we can sort of have our camera and note our player is still moving around. Which is absolutely awesome. This is what we want to happen. So if I press left, my character moves left. I press back, my character moves backwards, forward, and so on. But we're going to want our, camera, our player to move in the direction that we're at, the camera is facing. So I'm facing this way, and I press forward, the character is going to move forward in that direction. So this is what we need to go and modify. So let's stop this play, and let's have a look at what we can do. So this is where our scripting is going to come into place. So we'll just save that scene, and we're just going to go back to our script, which is attached to the player. And we've got a few things we need to do with this. So I've still got my movement, I've still got my character control, I've got my player move, but I also need to set you know, how fast this guy is going to spin around. So we're just going to have another public variable. Rotation speed, and let's just set that to 20. In the start, we've got a character controller. We're also actually going to need another private transform for our camera. So this is going to basically store the location of our camera or the transform XYZ vector 3 of our camera. So we've got our camera transform is assigned to camera dot main get the main camera get its transform. We could have made that either serialized or public and we and dragged it on and linked it up. Okay. 
Our move player, we're going to leave that, make a little change into this. So we've got our X and Y movement, and we're going to modify this movement so that it is in relation to the camera transform. It's forward location times the Z axis plus camera transform to the right and it's X axis. So essentially we've taken those X and Z axis there got the forward looking of the actual the camera multiplied it by which direction we want to move in the right of the camera and the X as well probably not essential to do this but can be a decent enough habit is just a jump movement to set that to zero if we're dealing with jump you probably might want to comment that out our movement still stays the same so let's just go and test what we have here so back in let's check make sure it compiles that's all good we haven't got any errors let's hit our little play and at least when I press forward the character moves forward in the direction the camera is facing and right But our character's going round and round in a circle. So we're almost there. And note when I move the mouse up and down, the camera switches its position. That's pretty awesome. So we've got a little bit of just modifications for our code. So let's just switch back. Okay, got a bunch of extra empty lines there. So we've got it on move. Now we want to actually deal with rotating the player. And we're going to run this function up here. So I'll do the move, then it will rotate it. Okay, so what we need to do, there's a chunk of maths that's involved in here. So player target angle. This is basically what direction we need to basically turn our player character. Um, don't worry too much about the maths. And it's going to take in our X and Y movement and basically get use tan to basically get the angle that we need. Now by default it takes that as radians so we can do math f so functions radians two degrees okay and then we also need to basically add on our camera transform Euler angles y uh, this is basically just giving the angle of the camera we're going to get the player rotation so this is going to store a quaternion I'm not sure exactly how to explain these Uh, basically to ways of storing angles and values turn it into an Euler angle and we want zero take that change the y-axis by the player target angle and we don't want to change the Z so we're only dealing with it on the vertical plane and now we actually need to change our rotation of the player so essentially we're spinning around the y-axis 
is what's going on here. And loop is going to make it's going to do small sort of adjustments adjustments to move towards this. Transform dot rotation. So take our player rotation and time dot delta time and our rotation speed. How fast we want to sort of turn towards that location. Okay, let's switch back and give this a go and let's see how it's turned out. So we can see our character is now turning towards our player. And we've still got this moving around in a circle. That's because there's one thing I forgot to change. Which, where is it? So we'll follow with world up. We want to tell it to do this math in terms of the world space. So if we move right, character moves right, left, then move left. back the character moves towards us okay these cameras are a bit close so we can actually just go and let's change these so let's say middle rig we'll move that out to about so we can sort of see the middle rig yeah about eight looks right our top rig we can actually override what we need to Let's just try really zoomed out and our bottom rig is going to be, let's actually try that one at 15 and let's try that one at 20. Let's see what we get. So we can sort of see these sort of shapes have sort of changed. So our zoomed out is way out. So let's actually bring that into 10. Let's bring the top rig in even closer. So we can sort of play with these to get our values of where our cameras are going to be. And we can play around with the heights of them. So really we get some quite cool options. Do just experiment until you get what you want. One last little thing is what we can probably notice is we might actually be able to clip through some walls, just like that. If we want to turn that off, we'll disable it. We're going to add an extension. Go to Cine Machine Collider. There's a new object. Collide against default. And we want to ignore the player. And you need to make sure your player object is tagged as a player. So now I'm probably going to get some other weird little artifacts. Is if I now zoom down and I try and get this camera on the other side, it will force itself to be on the same side. So that's how to use Cine Machine to make a third person character controller. I, it, this is quite a complex task. There are a lot of things which can go wrong and will go wrong. Just remember to always fail upwards.